Shreveport, Louisiana, bowl season is back from a one-day break with the 36th edition of the Independence Bowl. From the ACC come the North Carolina Tar Heels. A win will depend largely on the performance of the best freshman tailback in the country, Giovanni Bernard, and a fearsome defensive end, Quinton Copels, who invokes memories of a past Tar Heel legend, the Julius Peppers. The Missouri Tigers may be playing their final game as a member of the Big 12 before moving to the SEC. A win would be their fourth straight to end the season, and their fate sits squarely on the shoulders of their dual threat, sophomore quarterback, James Franklin. Happy holidays to you. Glad you're with us, Rob Stone, Danny Cannell. Allison Williams will join us from the field momentarily. And the bowl season has been on this year already. Of the seven games played, only two have been decided by more than 10 points. We had two wild finishes as well. They've been great, you know, because this is what teams play for. When you don't have a playoff system, this is every team's championship. You play for conference bragging rights, and you play because you want to end the season on a positive note. It'll be something to watch out for today to see who wants it more today. Let's talk about North Carolina first, and I feel like, I mean, it's great to have you here as well, but <laughs> I feel like Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay should be up here joining us because Carolina is absolutely loaded with NFL-ready talent. They've got some studs out there, and none more so than Quentin Copel's on the outside, the defensive end. This is an absolute stud. He's going to go in the up top half of the draft. See him here at the defensive end position. He can wreak havoc in backfield. He will move around, but he excels on the outside. To see him here once again, what I really like, he gets after the passer, even he gets out of a position, still pursues and makes plays like that in the backfield. On the offensive side for UNC, they also have a pretty impressive receiver in 6'4", 225-pound Dwight Jones. It's catches like this one that have NFL scouts drooling over the possibility of what he could do next year on Sundays. Jones led the ACC in receptions and touchdown grabs. The staff telling us this week he may be the best wide receiver that has come out of their program in a while, and they've sent some good wide receivers there lately. As for Missouri, offensively, it is all about their quarterback, sophomore James Franklin. He does it with the arm, he does it with his legs. 33 total touchdowns attributed to him. And Missouri's got a nice little tradition of quarterbacks coming through there. Most recently, last year's first round pick, Blaine Gabbert. So James Franklin had big shoes to fill. Got off to a little bit of a rough start early on, but he's a dual threat at quarterback, really settled into the position. Is a big reason why Missouri finished the season strong was his play on the field. Allison Williams downstairs joining us today, standing by with Missouri head coach, Gary Pinkle. Thank you very much, Rob. Coach Pinkle, you finished the season winning four of your last five, including three straight, but that was a month ago. Can you carry some of the, that momentum into this game? Well, I think you want to. I think the big thing in bowl games, we all know, is uh, can all the things that are going on, can you can you sort all that and get focused to play your best football game? And that's that's uh, what we're working hard to do. Hopefully we can do that. And that football game, you'll face a very talented UNC defense featuring several guys that will likely be playing on Sunday next fall. What must James Franklin and your offense do well to have success today? Well, I think he's got to play together. I think that's the most important thing. You know, James has got to do what he does. But, uh, you know, offensive football is everybody working together. And, uh, and when you do that, uh, you've got a chance to execute. They are a very talented team, so uh, we, have, we, we will have our uh, challenges today. Coach Pinkle, you said you checked the weather. It's not going to rain anymore. I'm hoping you're right. It's been a wet day so far. What impact do you think the weather will have? I don't think I have any other because it doesn't matter. You know, bottom line, you got to go play. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Rob? I saw Coach Pinkle in the lobby this morning, had a conversation with him, and his iPad was up <laughs> on weather.com. So he was eyeballing the weather They all this say morning. that it right. doesn't matter, but they know better than that. But more of it's a mental thing, preparing your team to go out and play under adverse conditions. It's been raining off and on all day, up to about an inch. Everett Withers, the acting head coach for the University of North Carolina, 7-5 and five this year under very challenging circumstances. This will be his final game right now with the North Carolina program. After this, he is up to Columbus to join Urban Meyer and the Ohio State Buckeye staff, where he'll be co-defensive coordinator and assistant head coach. Missouri won the toss and deferred. So Carolina in their Carolina blue tops will receive the kick. Short one fielded at the 15 by Sean Tapley. Tapley across the 30 to the 40, stumbling and dragged down right at midfield. 36-yard return for Tapley. Got a nice return for North Carolina early. Tapley, see him just find a little hole, makes a couple guys miss, and that's great field position for Bryn Renner and this North Carolina offense to start this game right at midfield. There's Bryn Renner, number two, sophomore quarterback from West Springfield, Virginia, former baseball player with the Tar Heels. 
This is his first year as a starter, one of the most accurate passers in the land. Carolina loads up the left side on first and 10 from the 49. Quick strike, complete. Jones with the reception. And Jones, after a couple yard pickup, push back will give him four on the grab. And with that reception, Jones, seventh in ACC history with 80 receptions on the season. Kendra Jackson, number 13, the All Big 12 Honorable Mention safety with the tackle. So second and six for the Heels. A bunch formation to the right. Renner looks left. Throws one, almost a one-handed grab by Jones. Let's look at our impact players for the game today. For North Carolina, their running game really focuses around Giovanni Bernard. The super freshman has had an outstanding year. And for Missouri, their number one part of their game plan is to stop Geo as their defensive coordinator, Dave Steckel. And it'll have to start with Jaquie Smith. He's their defensive end run stopper. Bernard, the first 1,000-yard rusher at Carolina since 1997. From the shotgun, Renner. Under pressure, by some time, has a man wide open. Across the 30. Boyd finally taken down after a huge pickup. First down after the gain of 20. Well, offensive coordinator John Shoup expected they would get man-to-man -man coverage. And when you've got Brent Renner able to elude the pass rush, well, it's a long time for those defensive backs to cover this dynamic group of North Carolina receivers. Jeronny Boyd able to find his way to a nice hole is too much for Missouri to cover that long. Boyd, probably the fastest player on Carolina, will also run some reverses. Been a lot of attack through the air for Carolina. Now to the ground game, which is really their strength, and not much there. Maybe a pickup of two. Sheldon Richardson with the tackle of Bernard. And what a year Bernard had. All ACC first team as a redshirt freshman. That redshirt wasn't just a redshirt him. It was a redshirt because he tore up his knee very early in his true freshman camp. Just his third practice of two-a-days coming into Chapel Hill was a real setback for him, but it's great to see him bounce back and have the year he did this season. Second and eight for the Heels. Opening drive of the game. Renner again looking past. It's a short one complete to the tight end. Christian Wilson again of four that'll bring up third and four carolina playing without eric ebron at the tight end position today did not make the trip due to grades really like the offensive game plan by john shoop so far shown a couple different formations worked in the running game worked the ball down the field a couple times and also worked the short passing game this third down and five where he really expects a lot of man coverage think they might have chance for big plays 27 passing yards, just two on the ground on this drive. Third and five is what we'll call it. And Renner going for the end zone. And caught! Touchdown, Jones! Twenty-two yard strike. Renner's twenty-fourth touchdown of the year for Dwight Jones. That's his twelfth TD grab. Well, we talked about North Carolina wanting man coverage. Bryn Renner recognized it right from the snap. Was able to take advantage of the matchup outside. Great throw and catch. Extra point for Carolina by Thomas Moore is good. Seven nothing heels. Six plays, fifty-one yards. That was easy. Jones pulls in his career 16th grab in the end zone. Carolina up early. Bryn Renner with his 24th touchdown pass this season. A new North Carolina single season record opening drive in Carolina after a very healthy kickoff return to about the 49. Just drove the distance and put seven on the board. Kickoff fielded by T.J. Moe. For Missouri and Moe 
Ripping off a good kickoff return as well as he crosses the 40 down at the 43. Let's look at what Bryn Renner saw. He saw man coverage across the board with a fade route on the outside. No safety help. Bryn Renner knows he's got a 6'4", 225 receiver against a 5'10", 185-pound defensive back. He'll take his chances every time with that matchup. Dwight Jones with that touchdown reception. That equals a single season record at North Carolina. You see the bio blast on this young man who's moving up a lot of people's draft boards. First offensive series now for Missouri. Five wideouts, an empty set. They told us Carolina may see more empty sets in the first half today than they saw all season. Franklin takes it, rolls to his right, and that one a little low and incomplete. Well, North Carolina has such fast, athletic linebackers. You want to get them outside of the box, get them out in the open where you can get your smaller, faster receivers against them, really try to put them out in space and put them in a bye. Missouri also going to speed up the tempo early on, the hope, speed up those big defensive ends and wear them down eventually. Bunch to the right of Franklin. Solo receiver to his left. Play action. Franklin running out of the pocket. He'll have to put the shoulder down and gets close to the 50, a pickup of seven on second down, so a third and three. A uh, pretty good job by James Franklin. Watch him survey the field, keeps his eyes downfield. The entire thing, the entire play, unfortunately had nowhere to go with the ball. At least he kept it on the ground and got some positive yardage in a much more manageable third down situation than if he had to take a sack or throw it away. He's averaged 18 and a half carries the last two games when their leading tailback, Henry Josie, went down for the season due to a knee injury. Third and two, there's a completion on a screen and a first down for the Tigers, their first of the afternoon. Very talented tight end, Michael Enu with the grab. If you're watching SportsCenter today, Todd McShay talked about Agnew and his draft prospects. Fifth on his tight end board right now. Had a huge year last year with 90 grabs and 767 yards. Numbers down significantly this year. Primarily because they didn't throw a whole lot of bubble screens. Franklin on first and ten. Kendall Lawrence is the man in motion, and Lawrence gets it to the 40. Gain of six on first down, second and four coming up. That was one of the most nonchalant motions I think I've ever seen. Kendall Lawrence just started out of the backfield, see him ho hum, come in, grab the ball, pick up a nice six yard gain. That's a big part of their Missouri's offense is deception, misdirection, and tempo, like you talked about, Rob. Second and four. See a lot of this double cadence. Looking over, James Franklin will look over the sideline. Double pass. Double pass. Looking for the end zone. Man is wide open. Touchdown, Missouri. West Kemp with the grab. Forty-yard strike. T.J. Moe with the pass. Kemp the reception. Well, we just talked about the misdirection and deception of Missouri's offense. That's exactly what they did right there. A little swing pass to start off. Looked like just an easy swing pass outside, but turned out to be a double pass. Carolina was absolutely fooled on that play. Five plays covering 58 yards. In 206 for Missouri. Trey Barrow ties this one up at seven. Santa apparently was very good to the offenses of Carolina and Missouri. The Tigers with some trickeration. We're tied at seven. Bob Stone, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams with you. We've had 11 plays from scrimmage and two touchdowns. Still over 10 minutes left in the first quarter. We're tied at sevens. Not sure we were expecting this quick of an offensive start, Danny. No, both teams pretty seamless down the field. Not a whole lot of positive defensive plays. So this will be the second kickoff return for the Tar Heels. Good looking boot. TJ Thorpe, the true freshman, takes it out of his end zone. Had a 100 yard return earlier this year versus Clemson. Will not get it here as he's smothered they'll mark him down at the 14 and we go downstairs to Allison Williams with 
Just a wonderful feel-good story this time of the year, Allison. Yeah, Rob, Missouri wide receiver LaDamian Washington said playing here in the Independence Bowl is the best Christmas gift ever. That's because LaDamian is from Shreveport and it allowed him to spend Christmas with his family and his three brothers who have a bond forged through tragedy. In 2006, they lost their mother, Sonia, to a blood clot while she was attending one of LaDamian's basketball games. Ten years prior to that, they had lost their father. So the boys were orphaned, and despite the oldest boy, LaCourtney, being just 18 they decided to stay together rather than be brought be broken up and they really just raised each other so he is playing for the first time in front of his brothers Rob. Carolina on first down goes to the ground and we go back to the LaDamian Washington story and a, a guy that this city absolutely embraced when his high school career was done the city actually gave him the key to the city here in Shreveport so much great support here in this community for him. He's the only player from Louisiana on either roster today. They brought up his brother. They're trying to get his youngest brother, who's now a freshman quarterback, a backup quarterback, up to Columbia on a full-time basis, but some issues that they're trying to figure out right now. Second and four for the Heels. Bryn Renner slings one. Dwight Jones makes the first tackle to miss and is able to extend this play and get a first down for Carolina. Jones, who had the touchdown reception on their opening drive with a gain of 14 there. Well, you can see Dwight Jones is looking for his last audition for those NFL scouts. Watch the moves here after he gets the ball in his hand. Avoids one tackle, stiff arms another, gets those extra yards. NFL scouts loving to see those receivers get yards after the catch. Jones, three grabs for 40 yards and a score already. Play action, runner rolling to his left. That one should have been caught in and out of the hands of Jones. So the audition for Dwight Jones is going quite well. Should have had that one. We'll, we'll cut him some slack after that great grab in the end zone. And what you're seeing is because they ran that play in the end zone, the fade, a lot of these shorter underneath routes are starting to come open. That time Dwight Jones ran a comeback route on the outside because Missouri clearly is worried about that deep threat now that they showed it once, Carolina did. They've shown a lot more respect for that deep ball. 91 total yards for North Carolina already. Eric Highsmith, the man in motion, and he's given the carry. Almost looked like he lost it for a moment. He's hit behind the 40. Huge loss. They'll mark him down at the 39, a loss of five. Another part of North Carolina's game plan was to try to get their linebackers out of position for Missouri here, running an end around. Look at that ball is absolutely juggling in Eric Highsmith's hands. Watch that ball. He never really has possession of that. It's a good thing he finally did secure it at the end. That could have been a disastrous turnover. Xavier Gooden with the tackle almost knocked it out. Bring up third and 15 for the Heels. Renner, six of eight for 70 yards. Steps up into the pocket, tucks it, runs it, across the 45. Now Markham just beyond that, so the punt team will come on for the first time today. A nice defensive stop for Missouri. After that opening drive, which they struggled, North Carolina moved the ball seamlessly down the field. That time, coming up and recognizing the reverse. Another stop on third and long. Get the ball back in their offense's hands. Kicking game, not a strength for the Tar Heels this year. This is walk-on true freshman Thomas Hibbard on to punt. Gets away a good-looking punt, though. T.J. Moe wants that sail over his head and into the end zone. Slew of wideouts lined up to the right of Franklin. That's where he looks, and that's where he lofts, and that's where he connects. First down, Michael Agnew, the tight end with his second reception, down at the 45. A gain of 25 on third down. Missouri just runs a wheel route on the outside, meaning the receiver showed to the flat and then turned it upfield. Again, that's the second time North Carolina's got caught off guard in the secondary. The give by Devin, or the give to Devin Moore, just shy of midfield. Pick up a four, second and six coming up. You know, talking about North Carolina's defense, they have so many weapons out there. Quentin Copels, we talked about, Zach Brown. It was interesting talking to offensive coordinator David Yost. You know, what are you going to do game plan wise? You're going to help your tackle? He said, nope, we're going to let our tackle go one on one. We're going to beat him with a quick game. Franklin under pressure, flush to his left and throws that one out of bounds. 
I think it helps too when you have a quarterback who can move a little bit too. Franklin can do that, a dual threat guy. The coaching staff told us that he'd be their short yardage guy in this game, a big body. And there's Copels. That was the previous earlier run than play. <laughs> now you can see he just throws offensive linemen out of the way. He's one of those players when he wants to, he can wreak havoc. Third and five coming up for Mizzou. There are two for two on third downs already here in the first quarter. Franklin the pitch. Moore the carry and he's got a lot of space. First down and a whole lot more. Breaks one tackle across the 30 towards the 25. Marked down at the 24. Pickup of 26 on a third and five play. Watch what Missouri does. They're just gonna run a little option off the end. Watch him come unblocked. All James Franklin does is attack him. As soon as he sees him, the defensive end suck up to the quarterback. He pitches it out to number 26, Davion Moore. And nobody on the outside contained for Carolina. And now Moore with the reception. That one will go for about a yard. Moore, a fifth year senior from St. Louis, Missouri. And he's technically the number two tailback today behind Kendall Lawrence. The number one tailback was Henry Josie, named all Big 12 first team, ruptured knee tendons in week 11 versus Texas. He is out for the season and still on crutches and still has another knee surgery to go. Franklin from the shotgun runs to his right. Pressured by Powell. There's some pop in there at the 20. Gain of five on second and nine. That'll bring up third and four. That was a serious collision right there. James Franklin at the end of this run. Watch number 98 just get laid back. That's Dante Page Moss. Laid the wood, but kind of bounced right off James Franklin. James Franklin's pretty big at 6'2", 225 pounds. I think a lot of people are watching, wondering how he's going to hold up against an SEC schedule next year. That's a pretty good test of his strength right there. It looks like he might handle it just fine. Third and four. This is the first play in the red zone today. Franklin, a nonchalant pass. First down. And goal to goal from the two-yard line. And guess who caught it? LaDamian Washington, the native of Shreveport. Allison hit on his wonderful story just a few minutes ago. And Washington with his first reception today. And he trots back on out. 16-yard pickup on third and four. So first and goal from the two. And a QB will keep it. Franklin the touchdown. Two drives, two Missouri touchdowns. And Missouri has North Carolina's defense guessing on almost every play. They've spread them out. They talked about running to one to run a ton of empty sets. They've done that. That time the zone read inside. Franklin keeps it himself. Trey Barrow's extra point makes it 14-7. 10 plays, 80 yards in under four minutes. Well, Damian Washington, a big grab on third down. His quarterback took it from there. Missouri on top of North Carolina, 14-7. Not since 1965 has Missouri won four games to close a season. Trying to do that today here at the Advocare V100 Independence Bowl in Shreveport. Tigers, two offensive drives, two touchdowns. The last 10 plays, 80 yards in under four minutes. Franklin with the rushing touchdown, his 14th of the year. Kickoff, Tar Heels fielded at the five. T.J. Thorpe, the true freshman from Durham to the 20, and he'll get just a few inches beyond that, maybe down to the 21. And maybe the knock you can have on Carolina the last couple of years, because they have recruited big time talent. I think a lot of people expected some more wins because of that talent. Renner, another completion to Dwight Jones, and gain of four there in the closing seconds of the first quarter. And Chapel Hill, <laughs> you've been there, Rob. It's a great uh, campus. It's a great school, great tradition. They're, you know, they've always been known as a basketball school, but their football program has had plenty of star power come out of there. It's pretty exciting to see what Larry Fedora is going to be able to do with all those weapons. There's always been that image, the sleeping giant. You know, don't wake yep. that Carolina football program. Mac Brown 
years ago had them on the cusp of being a perennial top five team. But right now the ACC is all about Clemson, Virginia Tech, Miami, Florida State for the most part. No gain there for Bernard on what should be the final play of the first quarter. Jacque Smith and Andrew Wilson converging on the tackle. Everett Withers getting set to head up to Columbus to join Urban Meyer's Buckeye staff. This is his final game in charge of the North Carolina program. 14-7 Missouri on top of the heels at the end of the first quarter here in Shreveport. Carolina has averaged almost 20 yards a play on third down. They have a third and six from the 38 right now. Renner play action. And his tailback stumbled and fell to the ground. Bernard, no way he could scoop that one up. And for the second straight possession, the Tar Heel punt team comes back on. Well, they were trying to call a screen pass to Gio Giovanni Bernard. You see the lineman getting out in front of him. Bernard just loses his footing out there. It is a little bit of a slick surface with all the rain they've had here in Shreveport. But man, you've got to find a way to keep your feet. If you could have gotten that to him, could have been another one of those big plays on third down for Carolina. Thomas Hibbert on the punt, T.J. Moe, who had the touchdown pass on Missouri's opening score. Back to receive it at the 20. Hibbert's last punt went 54 yards into the end zone. Another good looking punt from Hibbert. Angled away and over and out of bounds. They're gonna call this one out at the six. 56 yard punt. From their own six on top, 14-7. First down, Lawrence. Down at the 34-yard line, a pickup of 27 for the junior from Texas. Man, this is about as big as hole as you'll find. See the tackle right in front, he just kicks out the defensive end. Kendall Lawrence able to cut it up inside. This Carolina defense better wake up quick, or the next thing they know, they're going to be down 14. They are getting run on and passed on early on here. This is the third offensive series for Missouri. The first two ended up in touchdowns. Lawrence in motion, and he'll get the pass. And Lawrence skirts along the sideline, and Depends where they'll mark it. Awfully close to first down. Should be about a yard shy. Kevin Reddick there to push him out of bounds. So far, Missouri is just having their way. Watch the end of this play. See Kendall Lawrence going to catch a quick outlet. Watch the three North Carolina defenders come up there. Nobody really throws their body at them. Just kind of got to wonder about that tackling out there right now. Missouri averaging 10.2 yards per play. Mo across midfield. This Carolina defense only allowed 106.2 yards rushing through the course of the season. Second best in the ACC, 14th best in the nation. Missouri has already run for 89 yards and 184 total. Pitch to Moore, and Moore lowers the shoulder, and he should have enough for a first down. Gain of 11. That time, Missouri going right at big number 90. See him right up here, top of the screen. He's going to pop outside. He shows up. James Franklin attacks him, draws him toward him, then pitches outside to his back. Another huge chunk of yardage from Missouri. There's just too much talent on this North Carolina team for them not to be playing almost any defense whatsoever. Empty backfield, three wideouts to the right for Franklin. That's where he goes. Low one, caught inside the 30. I mean, we, we talked about Copels, we talked about Zach Brown, but they've also got Kevin Reddick, a junior, who's getting a lot of talk as a potential draft pick if he decided to come out. They've also got a, a right tackle, number 91, Tyreek Powell. He's already confirmed to go to the Senior Bowl. I mean, there is a stable of talent out there on the field, and Missouri's looking, making them look like a high school defense right now. Franklin will keep this one. Looking for the corner. And a 
Another kind of 50-50 ball he threw up there, broken up, intended for Mo. Tim Scott, the true freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia, there to break it up. Here's a corner route on the outside. Number 28 is going to break to the corner, but a great job of rec recognition by number seven, the true freshman, Tim Scott. He saw that route develop and made a good break on the football. You can talk about Missouri's quarterbacks. You know, they've had a pretty good lineage the past few guys have come through there. Brad Smith, Chase Daniel, Blaine Gabbert, all putting up great numbers, and James Franklin's right there with them. Missouri four for four on third downs today, averaging 17.9 yards on third down. Lawrence again in motion. Complete. And short of the first down is Jarrell Jackson. Gain of eight. Darius Lipford, who just missed the interception earlier, came up and made a nice tackle on this play. Somebody finally came to play. You see number 47 and number 23. Darius Lipford finally a good tackle in open field, forcing the field goal attempt for Missouri. Trey Barrow comes on five of seven overall this season as the number one field goal kicker. He's on in place of the injured Grant Russell. This one from 31 yards. First field goal attempt of this game, and it is good. And the lead is now at 10. Missouri on top, 17-7, 11-11 left in the first half. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, welcome you back to Shreveport. Tar Heels trailing the Tigers, 17-7. Short kickoff, fielded at the 23. And a return across the 30 for the Heels. Bernard again bottled up. He fumbled it. Missouri recovers at the 40. First turnover of the game. The Tigers have it. It has been a challenging first half for Bernard. Every time you get a ball carrier trying to get extra yardage, that's when they're most vulnerable. Giovanni Bernard gets up in there. There's a lot of traffic in there. Gets the ball stripped. Looked like number 48 might have finally got his arm around the football. Jacquees Smith, number three, was first there. He might have had it. Let's see if Missouri takes a shot here. So many teams like to do it coming off a turnover. Franklin lobs one, Lawrence, and he is met at the 33 by Zach Brown, an all-ACC first-team linebacker. Well, that's got to be a scary feeling. Watch James Franklin loft this ball just a little bit. Woo! That's Kendall Lawrence. you got to be <laughs> sitting under that ball being get to me quick so I can get my eyes down the field, especially when you got guys like Zach Brown in pursuit waiting to light you up. The hospital ball. Yeah, that is. Loss An of ambulance one. Ambulance ball. <laughs> Second and 16 coming up from the 32. High snap. Franklin will run it. And Franklin may be just shy of the first down. Gain of 15, they needed 16 for a first down. That was a called quarterback run all the way. You see Franklin, as soon as he gets it, you see Carolina's defensive end, Dante Page Moss, coming from the backside, finally does make the tackle. They, have, they actually left him unblocked and said, hey, James Franklin, he's yours. You have to use your speed to outrun him. That's exactly what he did. Third and one now for Missouri. Devin Moore, the tailback. There'll be another quarterback keeper. Franklin has a first down. And Oh, and a big quarterback, not afraid of the contact at all. Franklin, 6'2", 225, essentially their biggest running back. Well, that's what David Yost, their offensive coordinator, talked to us about. Short yard situations, they rely on James Franklin to pick up those tough yards, much like the University of Florida used to do with Tim Tebow. He's a very big athletic quarterback. You run that zone read, that's how they ran the touchdown earlier. Big part of their game plan. Back in the red zone are the Tigers. Touchdown and a field goal in the red zone so far for Missouri. Franklin, another run. They'll mark him down just short of the 10 to pick up 
of two, bring up second and eight. Big number 95, CM Kareem Martin came unblocked that time. I think it even caught James Franklin off guard a little bit. See him shoot the gap right here. Unblocked. James Franklin said, whoa, guy came on me pretty quick right there. Yeah, why, are you, why are you throwing me backwards? <laughs> Martin, a very talented sophomore from Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. Started every game this year. Second and eight now for Franklin and the Tigers. Three wide outs to his left. Moore the tailback. It'll be more this time, and more pickup of maybe two. Sylvester Williams, the junior college transfer with the tackle. Williams, a native of Jefferson City, Missouri. You know, for as poorly as Carolina's defense is playing, especially giving up all these yards on the ground, if they can somehow hold them to a field goal, they've got to feel okay about themselves. You know, the fact that they would only be down 13 points. How about the rushing yards discrepancy tonight, Danny? 138 for Missouri, 14 for North Carolina. Empty set for Franklin. Lawrence goes in motion. Franklin looking for the end zone, wide open. Where is the coverage? Jackson, the touchdown for Missouri. Well, that's about the third play. It's a touchdown earlier in the game. DJ Moe actually threw a, a pass from the backfield. But that's about the third big play that Carolina's given up to absolutely wide open Missouri receiver. Four possessions, four scores for the Tigers. This drive, seven plays, 40 yards. And the lead is at 24-7. 24 unanswered points for the Tigers. They are rolling in Louisiana. These two football programs met in 1973 and 74, both of them Missouri wins, and Tigers on top of the heels here in Shreveport. It's been a little running back by committee due to injury type approach for Missouri this year. Kendall Lawrence began the season as the starter. Henry Josie took over. Josie had an all Big 12 first team season and then blew out his knee in week 11 versus Texas. You saw Devin Moore also getting a start, had to miss some time due to an ankle injury. So the top three tailbacks all have been limited at some point this year. And Josie still out and on crutches. Another short kick opted by Missouri and Carolina unable to do much with it. Driven out of bounds close to the 35. And Allison downstairs standing by with the very talented sophomore running back Henry Josie. Yes I'm here with Henry still the uh, Big 12's leading rusher despite missing the final two games of the season and Henry first of all how are you doing where are you at in your recovery from the knee injury. Uh, I'm doing really good and I'm like a week ahead of my recovery. I started walking this week they didn't think I was going to be able to walk yet but uh, I improved uh, like, like a whole lot and just I had to get back with my teammates they just had to see me moving again. One surgery down, one more to go, but you had an injury, one doctor called one in a million because you tore actually all three ligaments in your knee. What gives you optimism, though, for your future going forward? Uh, just these guys standing behind me the whole time. Uh, that's some really good teammates, and uh, as you can see the excitement from the game. Yeah, let's check in on what we're missing here, Rob. Uh, an interception throw, and Missouri forces their second turnover it was sitting on the back of Jones and oh. good and able to pull it in. Really number 30 Karante Walker bobbled it out and then Dwight Jones had no idea where it was. It's actually sitting on his back. Xavier Gooden comes in for the easy interception ball drops right to him. That ball was sitting <laughs> suspended in air by bodies and who knows what else for what seemed like an eternity. Brent Renner saying, man, I thought I threw a pretty good pass. That was perfectly thrown. Franklin the run across the 25. Down at the 23. Big pickup on first and 15 of 13 yards. Second and two coming up. It's going to be exciting to watch James Franklin play in the SEC and watch him go against some of those SEC defenses. This attack is pretty lethal out there. You saw how balanced they are on the season. 
They had 2,835 rushing yards and 2,834 passing yards, only separated by one. That's pretty good balance. Franklin, the keeper, across the 20, and another first down. The Tigers have had 11 plays of 10 or more yards. They are absolutely gashing this Tar Heel defense, who may be halfway home to Chapel Hill right now. We were questioning how much Carolina would be investing into this game with all the turmoil they've gone through all season. And now a new head coach, Larry Fedora, taking over tomorrow. Rainy, cold conditions do nothing to help your psyche. And Missouri, after falling behind 7-0, is putting the whooping on the heels and looking to add more. Lawrence, the pickup. And that should be enough for a first down. 12th play of 10 or more yards for the Tigers in this half alone. I mean, every play, it, it's unbelievable. They're getting 10 yards a clip. If you're Carolina, I don't care that your coach is leaving for Ohio State. You still should be playing either if you're a senior, if you have a chance to play at the next level. If you're an underclassman, you're playing. You know your new coach, Larry Fedora, is watching this game. He's going to see game tape. Fourth trip in the red zone for the Tigers. And they're going to get their fourth score. Touchdown, Kendall Lawrence. Nine-yard touchdown run for Lawrence. His first, rather his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. points for the Tigers. We said it. Short bouncing kick this time. Fielded close to the 30. And another limited return for the Tar Heels. On first and 10, Renner going big. Lost one in. First down at the 15. There's Jeremy another Boyd. one. Another underclassman. These are the guys that are playing for next year, for the future of this Carolina program, and you'd expect them to step up. That was a perfectly thrown fade pass, a nice adjustment by Boyd on the outside. 31-yard gain after the 16-yard reception the previous play. So Carolina showing their first signs of offensive life since their opening drive when they methodically marched down the field and took a 7-0 lead. Power eye now for Carolina. 140 passing yards for the Heels. They're looking for more. Renner. We'll get a few more. Eric Highsmith with the grab. Gain of three yards. Look at Jay Boyd's catch on the outside. You see him just running a straight fade route. Nice adjustment. Number one, Kip Edwards in coverage. Really never had a chance. And Jimmy Boyd talking a little bit of smack at the end there. I'd prefer if you were up 31-7 than down 31-7. But maybe need something to excite this Carolina team. First trip into the red zone for the Carolina offense tonight. Bernard the carry goes nowhere. Runner from the shotgun. Jones pulls that one in inside the five. First down for Carolina. Mark him down at the three. No dropping there from Jones. Now you can see Dwight Jones on that one really looked that ball all the way in, made sure he wasn't going to try to make any moves. He just said, hey, I'm going to make secure this catch. Jones, five grabs for 54 yards. First stand goal for Carolina. They fake it to Houston. Renner throws it in the end zone. And out of the reach of Nelson Hurst. Oh, and Brent Renner almost made a spectacular throw in the back of the end zone. That was his last read. Nelson Hurst, the tight end, came all the way from the backside. Brent Renner was just kind of out of step with his feet. I think that's why the ball sailed that time. Nelson Hurst, the brother of left tackle James Hurst. 
Carolina's had issues running all day, just 14 yards on the ground. At first to goal, and then at second to goal, you'd think they would run it. Instead, they go to the air. A fade to the corner. Incomplete. Brings up third and goal. Jones almost able to haul that one in with one paw. Just a hair overthrown. See Dwight Jones stick that mid on it, try to bring it in. Couldn't pull off the circus catch. He went pass play on first and goal and second and goal from the two. You go that way on third, Danny. The Carolina's having substitution issues. That was Jones running in late. Nothing doing. A.J. Blue blown up. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Wow, A.J. Blue, you try to run a little misdirection on the inside. Boy, is he met right at the point of attack by number 48. That's their middle linebacker, Andrew Wilson. Stood up Blue right in the backfield. Missouri's crowd loves it. Fourth and goal. I mean, at this point, I, I can understand wanting to get points going into halftime, but you're down 31-7. I say you got to go for it. Get the touchdown. Yeah, this is going a for huge three. victory for Missouri. This will be a 20-yard field goal attempt for Thomas Moore. So Carolina takes three to close out the first half. And it's a 21-point game. Everett Withers has got some work to do in the locker room. Missouri will get the kickoff in the second half. Missouri with a school record and Independence Bowl record, 31 points at the break. Gary Pinkle standing by with Allison. Thanks, Rob. Coach Pinkle, UNC scored a touchdown on that opening drive, but you hold them to a field goal there. How have you guys been able to contain that UNC offense? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think we put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback and we're, and we're containing the run. I think that's the most important thing and kind of forcing them to throw the football. But as you can see, they made some big plays at the end. They got it down there. We're fortunate just to come away with a field goal. So, uh, you know, it was a big second half here. Offensively, how have you guys been able to run the ball so well? Well, we have a pretty good scheme to begin with, and I and I think uh, we're just really executing. I talked about that at the beginning with you. You know, if we can execute, uh, and, and, and hopefully we we'll continue to do it in the second half. Thank you, okay. Rob. Carolina scored first, went up 7-0. They just tacked on that field goal. In between, Missouri ran off 31 points. Now we send it to Ryan Burr in the studio for the H&R Block halftime report. Missouri all over. North Carolina in the first half. The rushing yards, major discrepancy, 192-13 in favor of the Tigers. Two turnovers also on North Carolina. And Allison standing by live with Tar Heel head coach Everett Withers. Thanks, Rob. Coach Withers, what concerns you most about that first half? Well, we didn't get them stopped. and We got to find a way to get them stopped. Okay, that's the only thing we got to do. We got to find a way to get them stopped, get them off the field, don't turn the ball over. We've got to change. And offensively, what do you need to do better running the ball? Just be consistent. Don't turn it over. Okay, thanks, Coach. Rob. Well, it is only a three-possession game if you're looking on the bright side for North Carolina. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell back here with you. If you're looking on the bad side, North Carolina defense looked like they just woke up from a post-Christmas meal nap. They are averaging or allowing 8.4 yards per play. Yeah, they've really struggled to stop Missouri's ball carriers all afternoon long. But you've got to credit Missouri, too. They came out with a great game plan. They spread Carolina out offensively, and they have just been getting 10, 12 yards a clip. Advo Care V100 Independence Bowl kicks off the second half, and TJ Moe with the return across the 35. Franklin looking to the sideline for guidance. Four wideouts lined up to his right. Well, I love the way they spread the field. Low snap. Franklin's going to run this one all the way. And will cross midfield. And pushed out of bounds. Charles Brown, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio, there to push him out at the 46. Here's James Franklin just going to call his own number to the left side. You see his shiftiness as a runner. 
And he just makes it look easy right there. And I know Everett Withers said we just have to stop them and play harder, but I think you've also, as a defensive coordinator, you've got to call more blitzes and put your guys in position. Get a little more aggressive going after Missouri. Franklin lost one up. This should be picked. And it is. Zach Brown pulls that one in. And that's what you do not want to do. That ball actually thrown under rest by James Franklin. It was number 90, Quentin Copels, who pressured James Franklin. Why right does he was throwing the ball? This ball came out like a lame duck, and you see why. Copels just got enough of James Franklin's hand on that throw. Carolina is able to try, you know, to get some momentum with an interception, get the ball back in their offense's hands. Exactly what the Tar Heels needed. Seventh career interception for the senior from Columbia, Maryland. He is number 20 on Mel Kuyper's big board. Todd McShay over there at Scouts Inc. loves him as well. Bernard hit once, hit twice, hit three times. The final lick laid by Michael Sam. Number 96, Lucas Vincent shoots the gap right away. You see him in the backfield. Bernard doesn't go down easy, but Lucas Vincent's buddies come to the rescue. Number 13, Jackson comes in there. Michael Sam, number 52, the linebacker. But really, that play was sparked by Lucas Vincent up front. Very physical, fly around, play your tails off, off type defense, led by Dave Steeks. Carolina, tall offering, pulled in. Won't even get him back to the original line of scrimmage, a pickup of two on the grab by Highsmith. See a little bit of a vertical leap by Highsmith on the outside. Kip Edwards, though, number one, met him right as soon as he got the football. It's the way it's been all afternoon. And into the evening here in Shreveport. Third and 13 for the Heels. They're five of nine on third down conversions. Trailing 21. Renner fires. First down, Carolina. Highsmith. That time it started with solid protection for Bren Renner, but watch Eric Highsmith on a deep in cut. Bren Renner delivers it perfectly in step to Highsmith. Number 88, you see him use his hands, just a hair behind him. Big first down for Carolina, looking to get any momentum to try to claw their way into this game. Dwight Jones was off to such a fast start, but Eric Highsmith has picked up a lot of the slack on the outside. Six grab for Highsmith. Renner going for six. Has a man, touchdown heels. Boyd. 44 yard touchdown strike, Renner to Boyd. A beautifully designed play. And boy, Brent Renner, when he's protected, he gets to set his feet. He delivers a nice ball down the field. Perfectly in step to Boyd. North Carolina team, Everett Withers, whatever he did say at halftime to get them to fight their way back in this game has worked. And it's a two touchdown game. Five plays covering 77 yards. One more look at the big play for Carolina. Trying to claw their way back in the game. Jay Boyd with a touchdown. Bryn Renner likes what he sees. Everett Withers in his final game as head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Saw his team trail 31-10 at half. Carolina has now trimmed that deficit to just 14 points. Jeremy Boyd, who pulled in that 44-yard touchdown reception in some pain there on the trainer's table. Five plays, 77 yards, two minutes, 43 seconds. Boyd, three grabs, 95 yards. Bad as Carolina looked, particularly I mean, defensively in the first half. Down just 14 at this juncture, you have to be thrilled if you're a Heels fan. Yeah, I think whatever ever Withers said at halftime obviously worked. Kickoff fielded by Mo. Thought about passing it. Mo found a little seam. And a spin. And still on his feet. 
has got a blocker, crosses midfield, and down the sideline and is pushed out at the 35. What a run by T.J. Moe. Wow, with T.J. Moe, it looked like they were going to do a little pass, a lateral pass, where they were going to try to set up a different return. T.J. Moe just gave a little hesitation. Watch him here, pump fake to the left. When he does, Carolina's defense all heads that way, which opened up that, the alleys through the middle of that wedge, and T.J. Moe does the rest. What a huge return for Missouri. 48-yard kickoff return, first and 10 from the Tar Heel, 34, just when they seem like they're getting back into it. Missouri electrifying this crowd here with a big kickoff return. Tigers looking for their first points here in the second half. They were up 31-7 at one point. Carolina got a late field goal to close out the half, and then that touchdown, and here comes Franklin. Running for a first down on first down. Pick up of 12. It's a big part of Missouri's plan the second half. They featured James Franklin several times on this little quarterback draw. Man, he can make you pay. All he needs is a little crease, and he'll make, make you pay. Franklin at 101 yards rushing. 15th play of 10 yards or more from the Missouri offense today. Loss of a couple there. Coples, the suffocating tackle at the 25. Quint Coples, a player that Todd McShay really likes in the NFL draft. I read at one point had him as a top five selection come April. Those draft boards, they fluctuate so much though. <laughs> I think they're doing the research like three Daily. times a day if you look at it. Mel Kuyper has him at seven, and McShay has him at five across the middle, complete to the tight end, Agnew. Down at the 14, a gain of 10. The 16th play of 10 yards or more for the Tigers tonight. Speaking of guys with NFL talent, Michael Agnew is one of them. Todd McShay likes him, says he's the fifth best tight end in the, on the big board. Agnew, three grabs, 39 yards tonight for the senior from Plainview, Texas. Big 12 first team last year and this year as well. And number five on the draft board at the tight end position, according to Todd McShay. Lawrence will run it inside the five. Well, Missouri may not have liked playing with a big lead. Now that the lead was cut to 14, they went back to what they did so well in the first half. A nice mix of run and pass. James Franklin hurt him with his legs. A nice little pass to Michael Agnew. And that time, Kendall Lawrence taking it all the way down about the one or two yard line. Empty set. First and goal for the Tigers trying to pad their 14 point lead. Fake the give to Lawrence, and Franklin's got his second rushing touchdown of the game. And his third overall. That was almost identical to the touchdown James Franklin scored earlier in the game. Sticks a little zone read in the running back's belly and takes it on his own. Walks in to the end zone. Two-yard touchdown run, his second two-yard touchdown run of the game. Outside of that one interception, it has been borderline flawless from Franklin today. Here's what set up the touchdown. Kendall Lawrence right here just running to the left side, finding a nice crease, taking it down to the two, and then James Franklin takes it himself for the walk-in touchdown to put Missouri's lead back to 21. Kickoff fielded at the 12 by Tapley, and Tapley set backwards. Renner on first down, complete to Highsmith, and Highsmith able to stretch just enough for that first down. Jackson with the tackle. Renner to Highsmith has pretty much been the passing combination of this second half for North Carolina. Seven straight completions now thrown by Renner. Uh, 
I. Smith, the leading receiver reception wise for the heels. Boyd, though, has 95 yards on three grabs. Runner looking and scrambling and down at the 30. Loss of four on first down. Sheldon Richardson. And Andrew Wilson with the tackle. And well, North Carolina is trying to move the ball vertically down the field to get more big plays like they had last time to Boyd. But watch Missouri's defense. They're not going to get beat deep again down the field. Really nowhere to go with the football is Renner. That's what you call a coverage sack right there. But Sheldon Richardson, number 34 for Missouri's defensive line, just kept after it. Was able to come up with a sack. Richardson, a former high school All-American, a big-time recruit, was a big get for the Tigers. Renner under center on second and 14. Again, they stay away from the running game. Go to the air. It's a miscommunication there. Or maybe some alligator arms. <laughs> Well, Dwight Jones, I, I like the throw by Bryn Renner on the outside. Dwight Jones kind of let up on his route. Thought he could have kept running, and Bryn Renner would have hit him right in stride. There's always a little hole right there in that two-deep zone coverage between the safety and the corner. That's what Bryn Renner saw, tried to lay it in that hole, and Dwight Jones was not on the same page. Jones, five grabs for 54 yards, zero. Here in the second half, as the Tar Heels try and get back into this one, they had pulled within 14. They're now back down 21. Renner on third and 14. Thinking about running it, has no choice and won't even come close, but a flag is thrown in late. Thrown behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be the second penalty on Carolina, but it'll be declined. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 64. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Let's look at the block in the back there. Comes late in the play. Watch Bryn Renner get outside the pocket. And when he does, it comes in late here. Right there, top of your screen. See the block in the back. That's Jonathan Cooper, number 64 for North Carolina. Really, at that point, you're trying to protect your quarterback, but it's not going to do your team any good. Time has run out on the third quarter. 15 minutes left from Shreveport, Missouri. On top, 38-17. You know Nelly's enjoying it. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams back here with you in Shreveport for the Advocare V100 Independence Bowl. Will not get a return here on this punt. Ball rolls dead at the 15. Take a look at our game summary. A one point. Missouri had run off 31 straight points to go on top 31 to 7. Carolina got a field goal to close the first half. Then got a touchdown in the third quarter. Things were getting interesting, but James Franklin yeah. responded with his second two yard touchdown run. And that's where we stand right now. Early stages of the fourth 38 17 Tigers. Franklin still in. A little screen pass and a good run after the catch to the 40 by Wes Kemp. Kemp had that 40-yard touchdown grab earlier this game. From T.J. Moe. Franklin will run across midfield. Pick up of 11. I mean, really, we've seen that play so many times. James Franklin sticking in there, showing the zone read, keeping it himself, and just cashing the middle of that Carolina defense for 10, 15 yards a pop. 114 yards rushing for the sophomore from Corinth, Texas. The offensive line of Missouri doing a wonderful job tonight. Missouri has not been sacked. Franklin on play action, takes the easy drop off, more the grab into Tar Heel territory, pick up of two. Now looking at James Franklin, you talk about him as a dual threat, but I don't think people realize just how much of a dual threat he is. He's in pretty elite company. He's one of only three quarterbacks at the FBS level who have rushed for over 800 yards and passed for more than 2,000. 
The company he's got is Denard Robinson at Michigan and Chandler Harness at Northern Illinois. If you know anything about Northern Illinois and watch Chandler Harness play, you know he's in pretty elite company. Yeah, we had a chance to see them, and we'll see them again later in the season in Mobile. Go Daddy Ball. Moore with the carry. Gain of 13. There's another double-digit pickup for the Tigers. It was interesting talking to Dave, uh, James Franklin's coaches about him, and it's been a year early on that was still with some adversity. Had a few games where he struggled, but he's really kind of come into his own. They've watched him mature. Franklin now with 953 rushing yards this season. And he's looking for more here. And we'll get it. And it's still on his feet. Tackled from behind inside the 15, down at the 12. Zach Brown with a touchdown saving tackle. A beefy pickup of 23 for Franklin. Once more, I mean, you can just hit replay and see them all coming at you. James Franklin, once again, shedding tacklers. Three North Carolina defenders come up there with a weak arm tackle. Finally, it's Zach Brown brings him down at the end. 137 yards rushing tonight, 976 on the season. There's no need for an MVP vote. <laughs> oh, now they're getting greedy, though. Well, TJ Moe, who had a touchdown pass earlier in the game on a double pass down the field, that time tried to throw it back to James Franklin. Now's when you can let it all hang out as a play caller. You've got a nice lead. You're in a bowl, so you know you got a few extra tick trick plays up your sleeve. Why not open up the playbook a little bit? So now second and 10 from the 12. Franklin. Gain of five. Sylvester Williams with the tackle. Well, twice from about this territory tonight, Missouri has called James Franklin up the middle. And both times, he's almost hit his head on the goalpost. We'll see if they go back to the well once again. Lawrence. Trying to find an edge out wide, can't. Zach Brown was there to close it off. And the kick team will come on for Missouri. Haven't seen Trey Barrow kick a field goal since the second quarter. He connected from 31. And this to put Missouri in the 40s. Missouri working the clock right now. 26 yard field goal attempt for Barrow. Okay. 41-17. That guy's been getting a workout today. Hope he didn't get his cardio in at the hotel. Ditto the Tiger. What do you See the gun out? show, man. Yeah, <laughs> come on, work those pecs and shoulders. Is that Truman the Tiger? He's pumping him out. He looks like Danny Cannell. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. For the Missouri, it was interesting talking to them because you forget both these teams were here on Christmas. Missouri actually got to go to the East Ridge Country Club as a team. So had a Christmas carol sing-off. I like it. <laughs> All the classes had to get up and sing, and we asked which class performed the best. It was the redshirt freshman, turned by Carolina's Thorpe. Thorpe down at the 38. Darvin Revis was the star of that show, apparently. And we go downstairs to Allison. And guys, it's been a solid game for the Missouri football team, but a tough start to the, the day for uh, the Missouri mascot. Truman the Tiger during Fan Fest dropped and broke the Independence Bowl trophy. He absolutely <laughs> shattered it. Yeah, so ball security not an issue. Trophy security is, though. Fortunately, though, they got a replacement. They brought in the backup trophy about two hours before the game. So Missouri will be presented with the trophy, but not the original one. You can blame Truman for that. Truman. That's why I'm, I'm, on, I'm a dog fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It's like uh, shades of the uh, the Spanish soccer team that celebrated this year on the bus and dropped the trophy in the, the bus 
ran over it. <laughs> Truman! <laughs> Where, do we have a site of the new trophies that made of plastic or something? <laughs> well, I mean, you've got to be on your game to have backup trophies. That is that is strategic That is planning. pretty impressive. You and can get a look at it on ESPN3 after the game. Oh, Danny, you, a look and your, at it? you and your plug. Second Absolutely. and two for the heels. Renner still in it. Runs into the face of a couple defenders. Escapes and finds Bernard with the reception into Tiger territory. Is, is Truman hiding from us right now? Is he getting? Is he being punished with some uh, some leg squats and some sit-ups after dropping? Signing yeah. autographs. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm cool. No slippery fingers here. Yeah, I'm Truman. I drop mass. I drop trophies. There may be a mascot ban at next year's Independence <laughs> Bowl. Contractually, your mascots are not allowed to hold our trophy. Man, somebody you know has got some video of that on their phone. Thank God. Come on, YouTube. That's Come on, YouTube. That's going to be uploaded for sure. If we, we, have five, we have four minutes and 57 seconds for somebody to download that for us. Bernard, another reception. Hello, Truman up in his game over there on the left. Truman is a male tiger, right, named after Harry S. Truman, who hailed from Missouri. Renner lost that one, unable to be corralled by Bernard. <laughs> Allison all over the mascot beat. I love it. That's, I that's breaking it's college news right there. College football, man. For sure it is. That's why you love this sport. Well, Renner's got a bright future ahead of him. 25 touchdown passes this season, two of them coming tonight. We've had people ask us via Twitter, why is Renner's hand red? And I'll tell you why. All right. I'm going to guess the yeah. red on the in the end zones of the bowl. Yeah. Renner at completion there. Jones trying to shake some tackles. So, Renner, you have the mystery right now. Well, have you seen him in the end zone touching that bowl? No. I, I haven't <laughs> so, watched him all game. Let's hit it from Allison. Oh, Allison knows. She knows. Yes. I know, too. It doesn't involve a mascot, but the you know this. Red. All right, let's see it. Danny, you say you know. Tell me if you think this is correct. This is what I was told on the sidelines earlier, that the reason his hands are red is because the balls were actually dyed red by Butch Davis before he left. He didn't like the color brown of the balls before he left, so he dyed them a red, and they're bleeding because it's been rainy and wet here. And Danny, Renner with a touchdown to Highsmith. Boy, Renner, I don't care what color his hands are. That was a pretty impressive throw right there down the middle. And I will concur with Allison. I don't know if they're dyed or not, but anytime you throw the ball in the wet weather, your hand gets some of the color from the pigskin. Highsmith with the touchdown grab. Renner now 317 yards passing, three touchdowns and a pick. 408 left on the clock. And it's a two touchdown game. Well, Brent Renner, I don't know what color his hand, blue, red, whatever it is, he's got the hot hand. Finding Eric Highsmith in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Hot hand, red, I get it, Danny, you're good. 17-point Tiger lead. That is a live shot in the ops room. The backup Truman top, and there is the backup Advocare V100 Independence Bowl Championship Trophy. Sometimes you gotta go to your backup. Backup has to deliver. Carolina down 17. Missouri expecting the onside kick, and here it comes, and that one got away from them. Really got away. In the... Tigers will take control at the 38. Under a minute to go. And the chant of SEC echoing now from the Missouri faithful. Gary Pinkle in his final game as a Big 12 school. Now he talked about the importance of this game being a launching pad for Missouri as they make that jump into the SEC. Could have not have asked for a better performance out of his team this afternoon. 495 total yards of offense. And they're looking for more. Closing seconds. Oh, Another rush. <laughs> Down at the 16. 
<laughs> Gary Pinkle and some of the members of his staff taking an early shower. <laughs> wow, that was about that's, one of, that's one of the best Gatorade baths I've ever seen. I mean, they got him with a whole lot of Gatorade on that one. A lot of orange. They, they know not to mess with the big boss, right? Oh. They go the assistant route. And Everett Withers and Carolina will finish the campaign at seven and six. Missouri on their way to the SEC, finish at eight and five. Four consecutive wins for Missouri, the first time since 65. They closed out a campaign, winning four straight. And once again, Missouri, their 2011 AdvoCare V100 Independence Bowl champs, courtesy of the 41-24 victory over North Carolina. 513 total yards for Missouri. 353 for Carolina, but just 36 rushing yards for the Heels in this loss. Your final here, 41-24 for Truman and the Tigers. For more live coverage of the trophy ceremony, log on to ESPN3.com. Coming up next, it's part of the interruption. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, and our entire production crew, I'm Rob Stone. Saying so long from Shreveport. Now we send it to Ryan Burr in the studio.